How's it going guys? Welcome to today's video. Over the past couple of weeks, a lot of you have been asking questions about the calf that I pulled and the mother too and wanting to know how they're both doing. So I thought today would be a good opportunity to head out into the pasture and check up on them. A lot of you have also had questions about the actual pull itself. And I wanted to go over some of that in a little more detail because when I filmed that video, you know, I was a lot more worried about just getting the calf out alive and I wasn't so uh, focused on the video itself. So I think the camera didn't pick up a few things that is probably important for you guys to see. And there's just some things that I probably skimmed over that I should have maybe gone into more detail about. So that's what we're going to be doing today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. All right, well, there is Lucky 13 and her calf. When I pulled up here, he was nursing, but of course now he's not. Of course, you can tell he's been nursing by the way he's sticking his tongue out. But yeah, as you can see, they're both doing great. She's actually turned out to be a really good mom. I mean, I would say for a heifer, but really she's a good mom for, for anything. She's just a good mom. So quite a few people asked me if the uh, pulling on the calf with the chains like that was going to hurt it or they suggested that I use uh, straps I think was what somebody said. So there you go, you can see he's walking really good now, no signs of limping or anything like that. So a lot of people also expressed concern for mother here and I appreciate that. But yeah, she is also doing really good. I haven't uh, noticed anything wrong with her either. I think little guy, you remember me? He's like, yeah, I remember you. Get away from me. <laughs> but yeah, mom's looking really good. She's doing well. Really not much more to say about it. I really appreciate all the comments, you guys, and all the concern for both the mother and the calf. But now that we've seen how good they're doing. I want to go back up into the corral and talk a little bit more about pulling calves. I don't get it. Why? All right guys, so we're back up here at the squeeze chute and I just wanted to, like I said before, just kind of go through in a little more detail what I did um, while pulling the calf and kind of some things that you should be thinking about if you ever find yourself having to do this yourself. Here we are on the business end of the chute. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just gonna use the butt gate on the chute and tie my calving chain to that, and we'll just treat that as if they were hooves that the chains were tied onto. So I'm just gonna pick a bar on there that's about the right height of where the cow would be, and we'll go from there. So if I were pulling a calf, I would say the business is gonna be happening right about here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the chain right there. Yeah, chain wouldn't normally be that long, so I'm just gonna wrap it a few times just to try to make this as kind of realistic as we can. Probably about there is about right. Now, as we look to the back of the chute for a place to anchor to, there's really nothing except for this butt gate that I added here. Now. When I built the tub and alley, I actually made this butt gate not only to stop cows from backing out of the chute into the tub, but I also designed it so that it would be a good anchor point for me to pull calves from. So I've got the one, two, three different options of where I can tie off to. Honestly, well, you know what? Let me get it down in position and let's talk about it a little bit more. Now I've got the gate down, let me go back to kind of what I was starting to say. This top bar here is honestly too tall. Um, 
I, I, would, I would really never pull from that. That's really more just to keep the cows from backing up. But this middle bar and the lower bar are two good options for pulling on cows. Now, the middle bar would probably be for a pretty tall cow. Honestly, the majority of time when I'm pulling calves, it's gonna be on heifers, which are generally smaller, especially if they're having trouble giving birth. So most of the time I'm using the bottom here. There's really no trick here. Um, any kind of knot you wanna do is gonna work. I kind of tend to uh, prefer something that I can undo though when it's all done with. That's why I like using these straps because they got the loops here and you can just easily loop it like that and it's really easy to get off when you're done. I've got my anchor tied on. Whoa. I got my calving chains on my calf. The only thing missing now is to hook up the come along or whatever you're going to use to actually pull the calf with. This is how I would rig this setup when I'm getting ready to pull the calf. Now, notice that this line has a lot of slack in it. The reason for that is that when I pull with a come along, I actually use the come along just as much for uh, bringing in the slack of the line as I do for pulling. You see, a come along has way more pulling power than you actually need to pull the calf. So you wanna use this power very wisely and very sparingly. What I like to do when I first get started is get up on this line and stand on it. By standing on the line, like as if it's a slack line, I'm doing two things. I'm applying a little bit of pressure to help her push and I'm also pulling down. Notice that I'm not pulling straight back obviously because my weight is pushing down. Now, if this isn't enough to get her to start pushing, then I can grab on to these rails here on either side of the chute and kind of use that to push down to give myself a little more weight. As I'm standing on the line and she continues to push, when we start making good progress, you know, this line is obviously gonna start getting longer because there's a calf coming out. So you can hop off for a minute, take out some of your slack and go right back to standing on the line. As long as I know that I have slack in this line, I know that I'm not pulling too hard on the cow. I'd say about 90 to 95% of the time, pulling them this way does the trick. It just gives them that little bit of help, that little extra push to just kind of send that baby right on out. But what about the 10% of the time that this isn't enough? Well, then you have the power of the come along. Like I say, if you're responsible with it, if you're sparing with it, you can use that effectively and you can get the job done. This is kind of a last resort, but it's, it's, it's always here in case you need it. So that's why I like having it. If you do end up needing to use the come along to actually pull again, I, I think I'm repeating myself here, but I'm going to say it again because it's that important. Just put a little bit of tension on it and let her work and she should gain some ground. If she doesn't, after a couple minutes, give her a little more tension. It's a slow process. It's not supposed to happen fast. So if she's really having trouble and you need the extra power of this, just be very careful, work very slow, and you should be all right. So another thing that I don't think you guys were able to see on camera is when I get the, well, usually it's when you clear the head more likely the shoulders. Once you get them out, then I usually kind of abandon the come along and I'll just grab the chains with my hands and try to pull it out manually the rest of the way by myself. And that way um, I'm, I'm right up here close and I can kind of not really catch the calf, but I can sort of like ease him down onto the ground rather than just letting him, you know, kind of splat on the ground, which I know that happens in the field uh, a lot of times mothers right before they spit the calf out completely they stand up and that calf will just tumble out and hit the ground so nature's designed them to handle it but i don't know it's just the uh, the human side of me coming out when you see the new baby coming into the world you just kind of want to cushion them down to the ground a little bit so i mean that part's totally up to you you do what you think is right as far as that goes I hope this clears up some of the questions you guys had about how I do things in here. And I hope that if you've never pulled a calf before, but you, uh, you live a lifestyle where you might actually have to do that one day, that this gave you some things to think about, some things to consider, and um, you know, 
just some ways to get you prepared for when you do have to do that because something like this you it's good to have a game plan or kind of a general idea of what you're going to do when this or, or honestly when any emergency happens i mean it, the last thing that you want to do is just react to it it's nice to have a plan and just kind of like know what you're going to do and not have to figure it out while you're dealing with the uh, the stressful situation so thanks for hanging out in the corrals with me today guys i hope i'll see you again on farmer tyler ranch mm -hmm.